Doug Volks from DC Here here at CES 2019 on the eve of the entire show opening up uh, for everyone. Uh, but right now I'm looking at the new Matrix Power Watch 2. Now it was just announced yesterday on Indiegogo uh, for $199. And it's a GPS watch, but it's got a bit of a twist to it. Unlike most of the GPS watches where you go ahead and charge it via you know, cable or whatnot, this watch relies on your body heat and solar to charge. Now something of course that many people have asked me for for years and wondered when that was going to happen, when you'd be able to go ahead and use you know, solar or other kind of forms of basically continual forever energy, if you will, um, in a GPS watch. And it sounds like they're getting close to it. Uh, so in the past they've had their uh, Power Watch 1, which goes ahead and has that same technology in it, but without GPS. Uh, but this new unit here, and I've got two of them. So these are the two units right here. Uh, the one to the left is what it's going to look like at the end. So it looks a little more polished, whereas the one to the right right here is a bit of a prototype. These are both Power Watch 2. Uh, and what you're seeing around the edge here, that's the solar panels right there on this unit. Uh, in fact, I can turn on, for example, the backlight right there. That works. If I turn it over, uh, you can see there's an optical heart rate sensor in there. Uh, and this flat portion here is where it takes heat from your wrist, from your body, and converts it into energy. Uh, and the same concept is displayed right here on this heat sink. Uh, so you can basically essentially press the, the uh, top heat sink portion there and go ahead and it turns on a little LED light. Uh, but this whole flat portion right there is where it's going to go ahead and take that energy from you and turn it into usable energy for this watch. Um, now looking at these two watches here, we get kind of change of position. Uh, you can see certainly this is a bit more vibrant in this display here. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether or not they can achieve that. Uh, but it is pretty impressive. I can go through the menus here. It kind of there's not a lot of menus to go through to be honest. Just a pretty pretty slim prototype. There we go. Get the focus back in. Uh, you can see, I can see calories. These are all pretty much static across the board, steps and so on. It does do 24 by 7 activity tracking, so it does go ahead and track your steps and calories and whatnot. And they're using that uh, 24 by 7 heart rate you see on the back there to do heart rate metering. They're saying about one to two, or once every uh, one to two minutes, which you know is better than some watches, but it's certainly not like top of the line in terms of 24 by 7 heart rate. The real question is, of course, the of course the real question is how well will it work out in the trails and for how long. Uh, so right now the watch, the way they have it from a prototype standpoint, they're getting about 60 to 90 minutes of GPS on time. Uh, so once they turn that GPS on, before they run out of battery. And talking to them at that point, you'd have to stop and wait for it to recharge. Um, of course, it's always charging at a risk, but GPS burns like a blowtorch. And so from a battery consumption standpoint, that's their biggest issue. Uh, their hope though, their, their hopes and dreams are to become the ultra runner's watch. They want to go ahead and be out of power uh, an entire ultra marathon, whether you're going 100K or 200K or forever, it doesn't really matter. That's, that's their goal, that's what they want to get to. And they're using a couple different techniques to get there. One of them is to use essentially the gyros and stuff like that, the other sensors in this watch to predict where you're going so they can slightly lower that GPS sampling rate. Uh, that's the same technique that Suunto's using on their Suunto 9 GPS watches that allows them to get you know, crazy long battery life uh, and have reasonably good GPS tracks. Not fantastic, but really good for most ultra runners, that'd be just fine. So that's the hope to get to that point in time. Uh, right now, you know, it's still going to be a little bit of uh, work to get there, and they don't want to overpromise that they're saying. But uh, hopefully, if they can get, you know, say like the four to six hour range, I think that might fit the bill for a lot of people. And of course, then you're wearing it the rest of the day, and it's just charging back up again. Uh, but for that ultra crowd, it's not quite there yet. But I, this could be cool technology. Um, from a GPS chipset standpoint, they're using the U-Block GPS chipset, which are well used across the industry. I believe uh, Polar had that in like their M400 series and 430 series of GPS watches. So pretty well understood stuff there. Um, optical heart rate sensor isn't known in terms of what they're exactly using there. Uh, it looks like a pretty generic one. Only one uh, LED, which isn't necessarily the best, but um, we'll see how that works out. Oh, and before I forget, the whole plan is to upload to Strava and things like that. Um, if you look at their phone app right here, uh, you can see they record the GPS track to that. They can push to Strava, push to other services. So all the things that you would expect on a GPS watch are definitely coming down the road. As mentioned, the watch launched on Indiegogo just yesterday. It's at $199 Indiegogo. They're saying $499 at retail. Of course, retail pricing never usually ends up being what Indiegogo and Kickstarter companies say it is. But still, $199 is a pretty good price point if they can hit all these feature marks. Uh, they've already raised $500,000, so that's pretty impressive uh, for 24 hours in this particular space. So that's there's that. I think this could be cool stuff, cool tech to watch. I'm certainly interested in seeing it you know, transition from 
prototypes like these into that final version that you see here, seeing how the display looks, the clarity looks, seeing if they can truly hide that solar panel like they plan to on this one here where it disappears beneath the display. Um, lots of cool stuff. It's, it's kind of neat to see something like this at CES. Uh, it's kind of one of those, I've been looking around with this entire hall here at the pre media preview night, and this is the only sort of interesting wearable thing. Anyways, again, thanks for watching. Like the like button. Have a good one.